Hi, welcome to NewNworks. In this video, we will do a hands-on walkthrough of a machine learning project. First, let's see what are the prerequisites for a machine learning project. First, of course, we need a good laptop or a desktop computer. Machine learning projects consume a lot of resources. Hence, a computer should have a good memory and a processor. If your computer is having a GPU, it is well and good. If you don't have high performing computers, don't worry. There is a way to run the machine learning project online. We'll see that in later part of this video. Next, you need a good integrated development environment that is IDE. There are many IDEs used by data scientists like Visual Studio Code and JetBrains IntelliJ. Then of course, we need to have Python installed in your machine. If you are planning to build a project in a local computer, then you should have a Jupyter Notebook installed. It is widely used by data scientists and machine learning engineers. You can install Jupyter Notebook using Anaconda. We can download and install Anaconda from the Anaconda website shown here. Once Anaconda is installed in your local, we can see Anaconda Navigator in your local. It gives all the applications as part of Anaconda. Here we can see the Jupyter Notebook. If it is not installed, it will give you an option to install. If it is already installed, you can directly launch from here. Once we launch the Jupyter Notebook, it will launch the notebook in a browser. It shows all the directory structure within the Jupyter Notebook. Here we go to File and New Notebook. It will create a new notebook for us. If you see here, it creates an untitled.ipynb. All the JupyterPy notebook applications are in extensions ipynb. For now, we select the kernel Python 3 as our kernel. Now we are almost ready with our setup. We can either run the code directly from JupyterPy or any IDE we install in our local machine. Let's try running it from JupyterPy. Let's run a Python command. We can run this here. JupyterPy has got different types of cells, code cell and markdown cell. Code cell is used to execute our code, whereas Markdown cell is used to document. Let's see how to use the notebook file in VS Code. Let's open the notebook file, which has IPYNB extension. We have the option to add different cells, code cell and Markdown cell. Let's add a code cell and write a piece of code, and we can execute the code here. Similarly, we can add a Markdown cell. The Markdown cell is used for documentation. Let's add a documentation now we are almost ready with our local environment setup now we have to start our project for a project we need two major things one is the problem statement second we need the data let's see that one by one here is our full project notebook you can download it from our github repo the link is provided in the description here is our problem statement it reads like new work is an AI startup and they want to analyze the viewer engagement to understand which type of content most resonate to their audience. When you do the machine learning project, read the problem statement clearly because it provides a lot of insights about your data and what is the expected outcome. We'll see why we need to do this when we come to the model selection section later in this video. We have our problem statement. Now we need to collect the data required for this problem statement. For this specific problem, we got the data in a CSV file. The data is very small. Generally, the data size will be very huge. It will be thousands or in millions. The more the data you have, the more accurate the predictions of the model will be. We have our data. Next, we need to do the analysis and clean up the data to fit in our use cases. Generally, this task is done by data scientists. They do the exploratory study of the data and find the relationship between each data clean up data and make it usable for the model. They use various charts for analyzing the data. We can see about this later in this video. Please comment if you need a separate video for that. We have a lot of Python libraries that is used in machine learning and data science projects. Some notable ones are NumPy, Pandas, Scikit-Learn, Plotly, Matplotlib, TensorFlow, PyTorch and so on. Let's import the libraries needed for this project. We need NumPy, Pandas, Scikit-Learn for this specific project. So we imported all these libraries. Once we imported, then we can load our data into data frame. So we loaded the data frame. The data here represents the data frame. The data.head is used to visualize the first few records of the data. The data.shape is used to find how many rows and columns are available in the data. 
the data.describe method is used to find the statistical view of the data. And then we can use data.info, which will give us what are all the columns available and what are their data types. Let's analyze the data.info response. In order for machine learning model to perform well, we need to have the data in numerical format. So if you see our uh, data, we have a lot of object types. The object type otherwise represents uh, text format data. Uh, it can be either object or category. Once we done with our analysis on how the data looks, now it's time to do the missing value and duplicate value analysis. So let's do the missing value analysis here. We can use isnal.sumof to find what are the missing values within the data frame. Here we can see few missing values, the state to watch and uh, click per end screen element shown and the impress and click through rate. We have few missing values. We can treat the missing values by either by removing the entire rows or we can convert those values with a suitable alternatives. There are various approach for that. We can see that in a later part of video. Next, we have to do the duplicate value analysis. Uh, we can use a duplicated dot sum of method. On analyzing the data, we found that the missing value represent there is no entries for the specific value. So we replace uh, those missing values with a zero. We are using fill NA method to replace uh, the null values with uh, zero as we mentioned earlier the machine learning models perform well with the uh, numerical data so here we have few object or categorical data so we can convert those values into numerical values here we are using select the data type of object and category columns to get uh, what are all the non-numerical columns so we understand that the content video title and categories columns can be a text-based uh, column and but a uh, video publish time and average view duration there is no need of these to be a non-numerical columns we can convert these into numerical columns here we are converting the average view duration which is in a time hh uh, mm ss format into total seconds format which will be a int type and then we are converting the video publish time Video publish time is a date format. We are converting the date format into the video published day. We are going to find which day of the week the video is getting published. That should be good enough for this specific use case. Once we convert all our non-numerical data into a numerical data, we can drop all the non-numerical columns. So we are using data.drop of columns. So which will help us to drop all the non-numerical column. In some use cases, we cannot drop the categorical columns. We need to convert those into a numerical columns. There are few methods to convert those categorical columns into numerical columns. One is called one-hot encoding and another one is called label encoding. Here we are using one-hot encoding method and we are converting the category column into a numerical column. Now we are almost done with our data now it's time to choose our model there are various models in machine learning on a high level it is divided into supervised unsupervised and reinforcement learning supervised learning is further divided into classification and regression in classification there are so many models there are models like decision tree logistic regression support vector machine and we have bagging and boosting models in bagging we have random forest and uh, gradient boosting and extreme gradient boosting models. Similarly, in unsupervised model, we have uh, clustering and dimensionality reduction models. In clustering, we have k-means clustering and there are so many other models. Similarly, in dimensionality reduction, we have principal compound analysis and other models. The models provided here are on a very high level. There are so many other models available. Out of these models, we have to choose the model which fits our problem and the nature of our data. We mentioned in the earlier part of the video that we need to analyze the problem statement very clearly because it provides the data insights required for the problem. Now it's time to analyze the problem statement again. Let's take our problem. Here we need to identify the viewers engagement based on the historical data so the problem here is to predict the number of views based on the historical behavior hence we can conclude that this is a regression problem also based on the data which is provided most of the data is a label data 
so it is not an unsupervised learning so it is a supervised regression problem out of the many regression models available in machine learning which can be any of the regressor variant of the classification model all the really regression problem we can choose any of the model that fits in our problem let's choose a linear regression model for this specific use case now we got our model now it's time to split the data generally we split the data into three sets train test and validation set generally 70 to 80 percentage of the data will be given in the training set 10 to 15 percentage in test and validation sets based on the split the data adapts well for a change for now let's split the data into 80 20. we split the data as 80 20 80 in our training set 20 in our test set let's create our linear regression model in linear regression there are two types one is simple linear regression and multiple linear regression in simple linear regression we take our dependent variable and run it against an independent variable so here the dependent variable is the engaged views and the dependent variable is impressions so we are running it against impressions and once we create our uh, uh, linear regression model we can create our best fit line so we are doing we are using mat matplotlib.pyplot library to create our uh, best fit line this is our fit best fit line here we are seeing that uh, the impressions and the engaged views are uh, related linearly. As the impressions increase, most likely the engagement views also is increasing. Now we are doing same thing against other variables like duration. And uh, we will do the same thing against the video display day and uh, CATEC. Once we draw the best fit line, here we are checking the performance of the model. There are various metrics available to check the performance of a linear regression model. MAE, which is the mean absolute error. RMSC, which is root mean square error. MAPE, mean absolute percentage error. And R squared. All these metrics are used to find the performance of the model. So it gives us an overview of how our prediction is from the actual. So if we have more errors, then we, that means our model is not performing well. If uh, the error is less, that means our model is performing little better. We ran our simple linear regression against various variables like impression, duration, video publish day and others. Now we can run our multiple linear regression against categories. We have various categories of uh, videos like uh, categories of a companies categories a concepts intro a news and other things we can run the linear regression against these variables we are creating the variable here and now we are comparing the perf we are checking the performance of uh, this specific uh, uh, linear regression model similarly we are running another multiple linear regression against more variables like impression duration video published day and category so here we created our um, linear regression model and comparing the same performance like um, MAE, MAPE, RMSE, R squared and adjusted R squared. We are calculating all these values and we are putting it in a data frame. Now uh, once we are checking our uh, training performance here we are checking our test performance also. We are putting that in a, another data frame. When we we are checking the performance of training set in a data frame and here is our test set performance so we can analyze the performance here as we already mentioned that if any model that is having less errors that means the model is performing well similarly with respect to r squared r squared value should be more so if you have the higher the r square the model is performing well if lower the error that means the model is performing well here we are seeing our both test and um, training set uh, performance metrics. Here we can see this performance seems to be a little better because the error is comparatively less here, but uh, the R squared value is little better. Here also the R squared value is little better, but uh, the error values are little high. high. So we can conclude that the model, which is the multiple linear regression model, uh, which is performing. Once we are done with our model, we will deploy this model and we will get the real-time data. Here we are doing a simple 
uh, data set uh, which is a kind of real time data we are passing it to the model and we are trying to predict the uh, response of the model so here we are seeing uh, the engaged vvs 1.45 based on these metrics so let's change these values and see whether uh, any changes in the response so when we predict that we it's we are seeing the prediction is changing so when the video publish day changes uh, the number of views is getting increased similarly when we reduce the impressions and that also should have uh, impact in the prediction so here also we are seeing the prediction so the model is um, working um, but we are not sure whether uh, this is the perfect model so we created our model or uh, we are comparing the performance Suppose if the performance is not uh, uh, good and the model is not performing well, so do we need to throw that model? No, there are there is a way to fine tune the models. Each and every model are having so many parameters. We can fine tune those parameters. We can see how to fine tune a model in another video. Please comment if you are looking for how to fine tune a model. If you need assistance, use the Google form in the description or contact us at the email display.